Let me ask you a question. Do you ever just sit down at your bench knowing you want to tie some flies, but having no idea what you want to tie? I tell you, I do that all the time. And even though I've got a to-do list of a couple dozen flies, sometimes I just want to try something unique, something that I've never tied before. Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thank you for stopping by. So the pattern I'm talking about today, I found this in Randall Scott Stetzer's Flies the Best 1000. This is called the Colorado Captain. Now I couldn't find much history on this, couldn't even find a picture of it online, so I'm starting to think it's a relatively obscure pattern, probably created somewhere in Colorado. But it is a pretty cool looking fly. It reminds me a lot of a wolf style pattern, but it's got two characteristics that I really like in dry flies. One, golden pheasant tippets for the tail, and then two, it's got ostrich hurl for the body. That's a really unique trait in a dry fly. I mean, very few even have a peacock curl body. And speaking of that, if you don't have black ostrich hurl, just use peacock. It's gonna give you pretty much the same effect. It's not gonna be solid black. It's gonna have a little bit of green and gold in it, but I'm sure it's gonna fish pretty much the same. So this pattern today, it's not very difficult to tie. I think it looks really cool, and I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is, Colorado Captain. Common sizes for this guy, as big as an eight, as small as an 18. Now, I'm tying this on a size 10. I kinda like the big wolf style look to it, so I'm going big with it. Uh, that's a 1x long dry fly hook, and I'm using 70 denier black. I'll put a little base down about the first third of the hook, because I'm gonna tie in the wing before I go back to the tail. And the wing on this, like many wolf patterns, white calf tail. So I'm taking a, a medium sized chunk of it right here and it's not going to stack very well. It never does. So I just kind of pulled out the, the real long ones here. Maybe grab it by the tips and then pull out any of the really short ones. Get your length. Might be just slightly longer than the hackle we're going to tie in. So I think that's going to work right there. And tie it in at the position you want. Just know that we're going to have about three or four wraps of hackle in front of it. So I think that's going to work right there. After you get several securing wraps on it, I lift this up at about a 30 degree angle, put my scissors parallel to the hook, and then just cut it off. That way you can build just a little bit of a taper. So just some loose wraps going back right here, working on that. Now I've got, uh, you know, somewhat of a tapered, um, step down right there. Now back up here, I'm gonna go ahead and post this up. So lift it up, and as many wraps as it's gonna take, you want this, you know, uh, up, maybe not 90 degrees, but a little bit forward of 90 degrees right there. Maybe a few more wraps right there will, will work. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Now take your thread to the back, start of the bend. Now this step's optional, but the original recipe called for it. Just a small gold tag, right, before we catch in this tail. So this is a size 16 Mylar tinsel, catching it in with a gold side toward the hook. And then I'm just gonna wrap it maybe three widths back, maybe four, whatever your preference is. And then back up over itself to get to the front where we're going to catch it in or tie it off. So I'm gonna back this thread up just a little bit and I'm gonna catch it right there. Let's see, two wraps right there. Should be fine. I've got a little bit of a, a lump. Pull that tight, see if it'll go away. And that's good enough. Okay, now we tie in the tail over the top of that tag. And the tail of this, golden pheasant tippets. Anytime I can tie a dry fly with these for the tail, I love it. So what I'll do here, just grab them by the tips. And this feather is just about used up. I'm gonna grab eight or 10 of them, reach in here and cut it off. Now the tip should stay aligned. So right there, I'm gonna go back just a little farther because I like having both those bars showing. And I think that is an appropriate length right there. Maybe one more wrap back. 
and spend a few wraps right here if you want to try and smooth out that lump between your tail and your post or otherwise don't worry about it now this is what's the unique thing about this pattern it's the ostrich hurl body and ostrich hurl is actually pretty tough it's a little bit tougher than a peacock hurl so what I do this is the thick end that came from the the post you can see where I ripped it out and then this is the thinner end right here so I'm going to catch it in with a thin end that way when I wrap it up the fibers might be getting just a little bit longer as I go up and that might give you a little bit of a taper it might not but we'll see so take your thread back up here to oh just a, a little bit behind this post because we're going to wrap probably maybe three wraps of the brown hackle behind the post and then three or four in front of it so go ahead and wrap this this peacock curl just you know one wrap right in front of the other till we get up to the front Okay, I think that is bushy enough. I'm gonna put two thread wraps right here to lock this in. And then, snip off this excess. Let's tie in the brown hackle. I've got one of those calf tail fibers sticking back. I might have to trim that one. See what I'm talking about right there? I don't know how that happened, but it did happen, so. Off it goes. Okay. Now brown, Coachman brown, uh, maybe a lighter brown, and I don't use my hackle gauge for this. I just kind of hold it on there and then spin it, pull it around the hook until I get to the right length, which is about right there. Just maybe not one and a half times the, the hook gap, but close to it. So then strip off a little bit of stem right there. Now let's catch this in right behind the wing. couple of wraps right behind it and I'm going to take a few wraps up forward and I've got a little that stems a little bit long so I'm going to go ahead and trim it and a few more wraps to smooth that out right there now let's wrap this hackle see how many we we want to put behind it I'm thinking maybe two or three but Probably, I think that's two. I think that's going to be enough. Let's put three to four in front of it because it is a wolf style fly and a pretty bushy hackle. So I think we can get away with that right there. Let's go ahead and catch this off with two wraps. Let's go ahead and do three. Now let's snip this excess and any of these fibers pointing forward. Without snipping your thread that happens sometimes happened to me a couple times this week already okay so I will just temporarily pull these back to make a flat spot where I'm gonna put my whip finish I'm not trying to sweep these fibers back just getting me a room for a head and it's a bushy bushy dry fly so you don't have to worry about keeping the head tiny but it is a dry fly so you really don't want it to get too bulky either so three or four turn whip finish right here and then your drop of head cement and a little bit of cleanup. I've got one more calf tail fiber sticking down. How'd that happen? Again, I don't know, but I'm not going to worry about it. Put a drop of head cement on it and this guy's going in my fly box. So that's it folks, Colorado Captain. Pretty cool looking nifty pattern, not very hard to tie. So I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.